Good day grade 10s, welcome to this lesson in the June exam and revision week. In this lesson we're going to be revising, revising Euclidean geometry. So let's get started. Let's look at the, just the parallel lines here. So we've got two parallel lines, A and D, I mean A to B and DC to D. And what do we know? We know that we have, whenever we have parallel lines, we have things like your F shape which give you corresponding angles. We have a C shape, which is co-interior, and when you add them together, they add up to 180. And we have the Z shape, which means they alternate, and alternate angles are equal. And then obviously, we've also got the vertically opposite angles are equal of straight lines. And obviously, yeah, what they want us to do is solve for X. Okay, it says find the value of X. So we also should know that angle sum of a triangle gives you 180 degrees. But let's have a look at this. So a couple ways we can do this, but probably the easiest way is to realize that this line here, this angle is vertically opposite to this angle there. So therefore this is also x minus 20 degrees because they're vertically opposite. And then we've got a little triangle shape here and all the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So therefore we've got x plus 60 degrees plus x minus 20 degrees has to add up to 180 degrees. So therefore if we add that up you've got x plus x is 2x plus 60 minus 20 is 40 is equal to 180 degrees. Therefore 2x is equal to 180 minus 40. So 2x is 140 degrees and therefore x is equal to 70 degrees. Nice and easy here. All right, let's look at another example. It says find the value of x again. Again, we're looking at this one. This is a triangle. It's on a straight line, this value here, and they want the value of x. Now, the rule that you're actually using here is that the exterior angle equals the sum of the two interior opposite angles. In other words, x equals the sum of 68 plus 30. Okay, so therefore x equals 68 degrees plus 30 degrees, which is going to be just 98 degrees. Okay, now let's look at this one. Yeah, we've got two right angle triangles. You've got a right angle triangle here, and you've got 19 and x, and here you've got a right angle triangle there, and we've got 76 and 116. So the point with this is that we're actually looking at similar triangles here, similar triangles. How do I know this? Because this angle is vertically opposite with this angle, so these angles have to be the same. This is 90 degrees and this is 90 degrees, and since these two angles are the same, okay, so I could make this be Y for example, then this angle also has to be Y. And why do I say that? Because if, say for example, this is 90 and this is dot, then this angle has to be, and this is y, then this angle, if this angle is 90 and dot, then this angle also has to be y because it has to add up to the same things. It always has to add up to 180. So therefore, we're looking at similar triangles. And the cool thing about similar triangles is that they, the sides lengths form ratios, okay? So if we had to list this triangle in order, we'd go from y to 90 to x, right? If that's the case, if we're going from that, then we've got triangle P to the 90's N to the, along the x is O is similar, so it's going to be similar true triangle, and this time we're going from y, which is S, to R to O. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that PN over NO has to be equal to SR over RO. It has to have the same ratio because they're similar triangles. So this ratio is 76 over 116 and that there is 19 over something NO. And we're solving for NO because NO is our X. So we could do this a couple of ways. Probably the easiest way would be to swap both of these around. Okay, so we have the NO at the top. So we've got NO over 19 is equal to 70, oopsie, sorry, 116 over 76. So therefore NO 
is going to be 116 times by 19 over 76. And then we just whip out our calculator and we go 116 times 19 divided by 76 and we get 29. So therefore NO, which is actually the same thing as X, is going to have the value of 29. Now remember grade 10, these are revision videos. I'm doing this quite quickly and if you don't know the properties or don't remember the properties of similar triangles and therefore don't understand really what I've done so quickly, feel free to go to the weeks where I've gone through similar triangles and make sure you understand this. Okay, let's look at a couple more examples. It says state whether the triangles are congruent and give reasons. Okay, so here we've got two triangles. We've got triangle A, B and C and we've got triangle D, B and C. And what have they given us? They've given us that AB is equal to BD. They've given us that angle A is angle, equal to angle D and we have a common side. We have a common side of BC. So what would I, we say? We could say this would going to be angle side side. Okay? So it's not side angle side, it's angle side side. So is that congruent? Hmm, let's think about that. Is angle side side congruent? I know the things that are congruency are right angle hypotenuse side, side side side, side angle side, and the last one is angle side angle. Okay, so no, this does not fall into it, so this is not congruent. Now let's look at this example. Yeah, we've got an angle and an angle. We've got an angle and an angle. So obviously then that angle equals that angle, but we have a common side. So we have got angle, angle, side. So therefore, yes, this is congruent and it works because actually we also have angle, side, angle. So that works with that one and therefore it is congruent. Okay, let's look at the next couple of examples. It says ABCD is a quadrilateral. ABCD is a quadrilateral. So what are they saying? The whole of BD equals the whole of AC. But they also say that AT equals TC and TD is equal to TB. Right. So now it says prove that ABCD is a parallelogram. So one of the things that we can say about a parallelogram is, let's think about parallelograms. We can either say that one pair of opposite sides are parallel and equal, or two pairs of opposite sides are parallel, or two pairs of opposite sides are equal. Okay, right. So let's think about this. Probably the easiest thing would be to prove that this triangle is congruent to that triangle, or we could do these two. But let's choose the top two, so in the, the top one and bottom. So I'm going to say in triangle, and I'm going to go A, B, T, A, B, T and triangle and I'm going to go CDT, CDT. We are given that AT equals TC, AT equals TC, that DT, that sorry BT equals DT and we know that this angle here equals that angle there. Why? Because they are vertically opposite. So therefore angle ATB is equal to angle, angle, ATB is equal to angle DTC or CTD. Okay. Therefore triangle ABT is congruent to triangle to triangle 
um, CDT. So what does that mean? That means that this line here must be equal to this line. Therefore, AB has to be equal to CD. Okay, why? Because, the, oh sorry, and why is it congruent? It's congruent because we've got side angle side, side angle side. Okay, also because they are congruent, this angle A over here has to equal this angle C. Angle A has to equal angle C. So angle A, which is BAT, BAT, has to equal angle DCT, DCT. Why? Because they are congruent, but they are make a Z. And what is the Z shape? Z shape is alternate. But these angles are alternate. Therefore, AB must be parallel to CD. Therefore, ABCD is a parallelogram. There you go. So now we have proven that ABCD is a parallelogram. Now they require us to prove that ABCD is a, a rectangle. And what is special about a rectangle? Well, a rectangle is a special example of a parallelogram where the angles here are 90 degrees. Okay, the angles at the end are 90 degrees. So let's think about this. If this is a parallelogram, okay, let me just change colors. We could use congruency to prove this, but we know that this is parallel to this, and we know that this is parallel to this, okay? So if we let this be x, then do you agree that this angle is x, okay? And since these two are equal, yeah, we know that this is equal to this, okay? But if it's a parallelogram, we know that the bi diagonals bisect each other, okay, right? Therefore, we could say that because this is a parallelogram, therefore this is also equal to x, okay? Therefore, this is going to be 90 minus 2x, this is going to be 90 minus 2x, and this is going to be x as well. That's pretty obvious, okay? Now, if we look at that, we can see that this angle here has to be 2x, okay? Therefore, this angle here has to be 180 minus 2x divided by 2, right? Because it's 180 minus 2x divided by 2, which makes it equal, because it, this is an equilateral triangle. I mean, yeah, not an equilateral, an isosceles triangle. This is an isosceles triangle. So this angle here has to be the same as that angle there. And therefore, using the angle sum of triangles, this angle here has to be 180 minus 2x, and then we divide by 2, which becomes 90 minus x. So that angle there is 90 minus x. But if you look, that angle is 90 minus x, this bit here, but this is x. So together they make up 90 degrees. And therefore, we have proven that ABCD is a rectangle because if this angle is 90 degrees, then because these are parallel, this has to be 90 degrees. Because these are parallel, this has to be 90 degrees. And therefore, we have a parallelogram. Okay. Again, if you don't understand because I did this too quickly, watch the video again, but then also go back to the sections where we cover the different types of sites. Um, shapes that we have, parallelograms and rectangles, and looking at congruence in that. Okay, final question is looking at your midpoint theorem, where we say that basically if we join the midpoints of two sides of a triangle, then that line is going to be parallel to that, and this is going to be half of that line there. So if that's the case, we've got, we know that this Q is the midpoint because that line is equal to that line. We know that this line is that line, so therefore this QR joining the ST is going to be half the length of that. So by the midpoint theorem, if this is 14, this is going to be 28. 
also by the midpoint theorem because of the fact that we're joining the midpoints this line is parallel to this so whatever angle that is it has to be the same as that okay so we know that P is 40 degrees and we know that R is 60 degrees which makes up a hundred therefore Q has to be 80 degrees these angles here are corresponding because the fact that QR is parallel to ST so therefore Y is equal to 80 degrees and that grade 10 is revision of your Euclidean geometry for your revision ex for your June exam please if you didn't understand if I went too, through too quickly go look at the sections that are specifically for Euclidean geometry and go through the slower videos have a great day